Two fighter jets, two rival nations, and one looming question. Which aircraft truly dominates the skies? Pakistan's JF-17 Block III or India's Tejas Mukh-1A? This isn't just a tech comparison. It's a clash of doctrine, defense philosophy, and regional air power. Welcome to the tactical grid where we decode the hardware, strategy, and power plays behind today's most formidable military machines. Let's jump into the dogfight. The JF-17 Thunder, developed jointly by Pakistan and China, began as a budget multi-role jet to replace aging fleets. But with the Block III, the platform has undergone a transformation. This third generation is no longer just affordable. It's competitive. Featuring digital fly-by-wire AESA radar and cutting-edge Chinese avionics, the JF-17 Block III aims to go head-to-head -head with the best of its generation. Across the border, the Tejas Menke 1A is India's answer to both external threats and internal demands for indigenous capability. Designed and built by HAL, the Mk 1A incorporates years of combat feedback, aerodynamic refinements, and systems upgrades to become a core part of the Indian Air Force's modernization plan. Let's start with what's under the skin, the design and raw performance. Tejas is the smaller of the two, built with 45% composite materials that significantly reduces weight and radar signature. It can hit Mach 1.8, boasts excellent high alpha performance, and offers smooth energy recovery, all traits valued in a close range fight. Its compact size makes it harder to detect and ideal for tight combat environments like the Himalayan border zones. The JF-17 Block III, on the other hand, features a slightly bulkier airframe but offers better payload flexibility. With a top speed of Mach 1.6, it's not quite as fast, but it can carry more armament, including fuel tanks, missiles, and ECM pods. Its design is optimized for modular upgrades, allowing Pakistan to adapt the jet with newer tech over time, a crucial asset when export customers demand customization. Now for the brains of these birds radar systems. The JF-17 Block III is equipped with China's KLJ-7A ESA radar. It can track more than 15 targets and engage several simultaneously. AESA brings superior resistance to jamming, lower side lobe emissions, and faster scan rates. This leap makes the Block III Pakistan's first fully AESA-equipped frontline fighter. Tejas MK-1A, meanwhile, fields the ELM-2052 ASA radar developed by Israel's ELTA systems one of the most combat-proven radars in the world. With better clutter rejection, multi-target tracking, and electronic counter-countermeasures, it's arguably more advanced and reliable than the KLJ-7A. Radar superiority often determines who shoots first, and when it comes to beyond visual range engagements, milliseconds matter. Let's talk missiles. This is where the JF-17 Block III pulls out the heavy artillery. Armed with the Chinese PL-15, it's believed to be one of the longest-range air-to-air missiles in active service. Estimates range from 200 to 250 kilometers. The PL-15 is radar-guided, features an AESA seeker of its own, and has the capability to home in on targets long before they know they've been painted. Tejas Mach 1A currently uses the Derby ER and India's own Astra Mach 1, solid missiles with ranges of 100 to 110 kilometers. India is developing the Astra Mach 2, expected to stretch to 160 kilometers or more. But as of now, the PL-15 outpaces them all, making it a serious long-range threat. This means the JF-17 can shoot before Tejas even sees it. A critical advantage in high-altitude standoff combat scenarios. But missile performance also depends on support systems, data links, AWACS integration, and mid-course correction capabilities. If India brings in Netra or Falcon AWACS platforms, Tejas could potentially get around the range disadvantage with better situational awareness and coordinated missile guidance. So while JF-17 may fire first, Tejas could still win the engagement if it sees the missile coming and outmaneuvers it. Let's close the distance. How do these jets perform in a dogfight? This is where Tejas takes the lead. Oh, and its delta wing design combined with digital flight control gives it crisp handling at all speeds. Tejas can perform tight turns, sustain higher G-forces, and recover energy faster. These traits are essential for outmaneuvering threats at close range, especially if radar locks fail or missiles are spoofed. JF-17 Block III isn't built for sustained high-G maneuvering. It can hold its own with modern control laws and thrust vectoring improvements in future versions, but in a pure visual range fight, Tejas is the more agile predator. Now let's take a look inside. The cockpit and avionics. Both jets feature fully digital glass cockpits, wide-angle HUDs, HOTUS controls, and helmet-mounted sights. 
Tejas Mirko 1A offers a more intuitive layout, improved pilot ergonomics, and Israeli electronic warfare systems that are combat proven. The JF-17 Block III brings improved situational awareness with a larger wide-angle HUD, full-color multifunction displays, and a new electronic warfare suite developed in China. While slightly behind Israeli tech in terms of maturity, it's modern and cost-effective. Exactly what Pakistan needs for mass deployment. What about operational status and battlefield experience? The JF-17 has a head start here. With over 150 units produced and already exported to nations like Nigeria and Myanmar, it has been combat tested. Pakistan has used it in real airspace encounters, including during the 2019 post balakot standoff with India. Tejas, while newer in operational terms, is rapidly entering full deployment. India has over 80 mk one a units on order, and HAL is ramping up production. It's been tested extensively, flown across continents in air shows, and is beginning to integrate into frontline IAF squadrons. In terms of maturity, JF-17 has the advantage today. But Tejas is catching up fast, with future variants like the Tejas Menke 2 and India's 5 th Gen AMCA already under development. Let's talk dollars and diplomacy, the export game. The JF-17 Block 3 is aggressively marketed. It's affordable, priced between $25 to $32 million per unit, and has low maintenance costs. With Chinese support, it appeals to nations with limited budgets looking for a multi-role jet that gets the job done. Tejas is priced higher, around $40 to $45 million, but brings better electronics, NATO compatibility, and long-term upgrade potential. Countries like Argentina and Egypt have shown strong interest, especially with India offering favorable deals and production partnerships. So depending on what a buyer values, quantity and price or tech and quality, either jet could win the deal. Final verdict? Let's break it down. BVR superiority? JF-17 Block 3 thanks to the PL-15. Radar and electronic warfare? Tejas Mech 1A with Israeli systems. Dogfight performance? Tejas. Lighter, more agile, and better thrust. Operational record? JF-17. More fielded and combat tested. Avionics and cockpit tech? Tejas edges ahead. Export readiness? JF-17 today, but Tejas is catching up. In pure technical terms, the JF-17 Block 3 is optimized for first strike BVR combat. It's a long-range hunter that can deny airspace before the enemy even sees it. But if the Tejas closes in, its maneuverability and electronic systems give it a real chance to win. At the end of the day, it's not just about the jet. It's about the pilot, the training, the support systems, and the doctrine behind the machine. And that's what makes this rivalry so fascinating. Which one do you think would win? The Thunder or the Tejas? Let us know in the comments. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow the tactical grid for more military deep dives, no-nonsense analysis, and content that cuts through the noise. Stay sharp. Stay tactical.